Jack Flaherty. What up, Jack? Harold, how you doing? Doing great, man. Doing great. How's the winter been so far? Uh, you know, it's been pretty good. Uh, I can't complain too much. Weather here in L.A. is always good. Um, you know, just it's been a lot of work. Uh, not really able to do much else, which, uh, you know, allows me to focus a little bit more. You know, when we left spring training in March last year and everything was shut down and then we went into the pandemic, you would have thought, that's going to be the biggest story of the year. But then all of a sudden, the summer comes around and George Floyd gets killed and the whole thing gets flipped upside down. And I'm just curious, what was that like being a player going through that time last summer? Um, man, it, it was weird, but, but I didn't even, it, it was one of those things I think, uh, you know, during the whole pandemic and being home kind of when that happened, it was just a different type of feeling. I didn't, it was one of those times I didn't necessarily feel like a player. Like, yeah, I was training and I was working out and I was preparing for the season, but I, I just, it, it really hit. Cause I just was like, I mean, as a human, I'm always, always a human being first more before, you know, I'm an athlete or anything else. So it just hit home. I wasn't in season. I wasn't playing. I didn't have to focus on, you know, who my next opponent was or, you know, where we're traveling to and what I got to prepare for. It, it just, it, it hit something deep down inside. I don't, I don't know what it was, but, but seeing that, seeing that video and seeing everything go on, it, it was just, uh, it, it was hard. It, it was, it was definitely hard. How was it when you all of a sudden get into the locker room? Because you were always somewhat a quiet reserve guy. And now all of a sudden it was like, Jack Flaherty's speaking out. How did your teammates kind of, did they look at you differently? How'd they receive that? You know, I don't think anybody looked at me differently. I never felt like, you know, the right person to speak out. You know, I'm mixed, but I'm like lighter skin tone. A lot of people don't even know that, you know, I was, that I was mixed. But, you know, I made sure that, you know, I talked to, you know, two guys I want to talk to and even, even Jordan Hicks as well. But I want to talk to Willie McGee and I want to talk to Dexter Fowler because, um, you know, I, I know, you know, Willie, Willie played in St. Louis um, and he went through it. And I just asked, you know, wanted to talk to them and be like, look, I know I've, I've, I've spoken up and I've said things. You know, I told Dexter from the get go, it was like, look, man, I'm following your footsteps. Um, whether it was, you know, the whole talk was, you know, the guy's going to take a knee. What's it going to look like? Are you going to go out for the anthem? Like little things like that. Did, um, it, did it make it easier? seeing the whole sports world react the way they did with the protests and, and they took a knee and they wore the Black Lives Matter t-shirts and all the different things that went on, did it make it easier for the current player or somebody like yourself? Yeah, I think it made you, it made you want to be a part of it. And then you see people kind of sitting out, uh, you know, Tasha Cloud, like, you know, people like her sitting out and, and Maya Moore and going about and, and doing whatever they could in terms of social justice. Um, you know, the, the the WNBA, I don't think, you know, the NBA gets a lot of credit for everything, but I don't think the WNBA gets enough credit for everything that they've been able yeah, to do. Yeah, they came strong. And, and the charge, yeah, the charge that they led in terms of everything, they don't get enough credit for it. So, so shout out to them. But I, I think everybody in the sports world speaking up, it made it easier to, um, to have those conversations. And, and, and then teammates were very receptive to it. They, they were, you know, we had conversations within the clubhouse. We had, we had conversations on the side and, and guys were just, it, it was right in front of them and you couldn't ignore it. So guys were there to have conversation and try to learn and understand whatever they could. Let's go back to you. You were talking about, you know, you're mixed. It's not like you didn't know you were. I said, I didn't know because if I'm watching you on the diamond, you got a baseball cap on, you're throwing your last name's Flaherty. And I'm thinking, mm -hmm. you know, that you're white because 100%. you look pretty light. And all of a sudden 100%. this all erupted. And I was like, what? So yeah. take me back to, like, when you first started understanding. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong here. You're, you're, your mom's white, and you were adopted by your mother and single mother, and she, and she basically raised you. And, uh, not basically. Yeah. She raised you. And so when did you find out I'm a little bit different, that I'm darker than even my brother? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, was, I was thinking about that, and I don't, I don't have a full answers to when like either I knew I was I was mixed or or whatever it came about I think it came about you know my mom told me early on like very young I think she said I was like four or five when she told me I was adopted when I finally understood like what that meant I was adopted my mom was white dad was black so 
all I've ever known is my mom is my mom. And she says she never directly told me like, oh yeah, you know, you're mixed. Um, but she, cause she wasn't totally sure. I think she just like, it just came to the understanding. And like, I started to understand things when I was, when I was playing basketball and was surrounded by other kids who were, who, who were mixed. And, and it just happened that way. We had like four or five kids on the team who had like one parent was black, one parent was white. It was, it wasn't, it wasn't nothing new. And, you know, being in LA, nobody ever like looked at my mom twice of like, Oh, you know, you're what you doing with that black kid? A little, little darker. Yeah. Yeah. No, nobody <laughs> yeah. ever. She said nobody ever looked at her twice. Like nobody ever questioned her. And, and I think we were just surrounded by, by a bunch of, by a bunch of people who came from so many different backgrounds. I mean, you know, my, my best friend you know, growing up is, is Armenian. My other best friend, you know, she's, she's Hispanic and, and it just, we we're surrounded by so many people with so many different backgrounds that, um, it was never anything where anybody looked at, you know, her and I weird and then questioned like, you know, my little brother who, who isn't mixed and no, nobody ever looked at it as a weird dynamic. What's next do we see changing in this country? You know, um, I think athletes have figured out the amount of uh, influence that, that you can truly have and the influence you can truly take on, on situations like this, on these, you know, truly human rights situations. I mean, you go back to the ESPYs years ago when it was Braun, D Wade, Mello, Chris Paul, I believe it was, it was there it was a four of them and they gave him a whole speech at the ESPYs um, about this. And it like came circled back when everything was going on and you see things kind of get recycled and you see things keep happening again. Now, this is a conversation that we've had and Dex was the first one to say it. He was like, you know, I don't know if changes are going to be made in, in my lifetime or your lifetime, or maybe even like his kids generation. He's, he's like, I don't know, but maybe like your kids and, and talking about me, like maybe your kids or maybe like your kids, kids, it's not necessarily, it's probably not something that's going to be changed and it's going to be perfect by the time like we're gone. But, if we, whatever we can do at this point to go forward and you see athletes kind of get together and join together in this and you see athletes and entertainers also get together and kind of bringing everybody together and talking about this, it's able to create some type of change. And, and, you know, the first step has been conversation, but again, you know, I hit a point this summer, it was after the, uh, what happened in Milwaukee, uh, in Kenosha when basically the sports world shut down where it, where it was just like, I'm kind of tired of having the conversation and now it's moving forward with, you know, what can we really do? And that was the whole thing with the NBA. That's why they shut down. They were like, look guys, we've had this conversation. We've, we've talked about it like for a month or so and we still see this happen. And, but now we have to take action. Now we have to do something. And that, that was the whole reason for them, like, you know, shutting down and not being a distraction for, you know, for the world. So it, it, it's, it's about action. What it looks like, man, I don't have all the answers. I don't know, but it, it's going to be something that's going to take time and it's going to take, um, it, it's going to take time and patience. Jack Flaherty. Appreciate you, man. Go get them. I appreciate it.